again. Back again. Back again. Yeah. And today, as you can see with the title, which I don't know what it is right now, something to do with Ghana, something to do with vlogging, I'm not sure. I will be starting a new series on my channel um, where I show you guys what I got up to three years ago when I was in Ghana. So I videoed bits here and there and took loads of pictures. I'm not sure what I'm going to come out with. I've not started any editing much um, of the video so far. So it's going to be interesting when I finish this video and you get to see what happens. That's the plan for today's video. That's the plan for the upcoming weeks. And uh, let's see what that go on, you know? For those of you who are interested in how I traveled, I'll let you know now. Yo, before I even tell you about my whole journey getting there, I can give some backstory. So obviously I needed to get a haircut before I left the country. I wasn't sure how the bar was going to be out there. Obviously there's going to be more for me than there are here. But I thought, let's just play it safe and do whatever. So I went with my boy, I'm going to call him Frank. I'm not going to bait him out for um, for his own sake. I went to a normal barber um, in town. We got there and he said, oh, what do you want today? I said, you know what? <sighs> Let's just go all off, all off. He said, all off. So this is back in the day, I had probably more of a high top or whatever. He said, all off, are you sure? I said, yeah, 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 I know what I'm doing. I want to all off. But I started going through it. It went zoom, 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 zoom. It all went off. I said, huh? I said, boss, this is not what I wanted. He said, you asked for all off. And I even asked you, are you sure? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Afterwards, poor Frank said, oh, you know what? You look sick, teach. You look like the guy, like your haircut looks sick. I thought, you know what? Yeah, he's right. I'm the guy, I look sick. Went to work, I think, oh yes, this is the one. Got home. <laughs> I looked at myself again. It was a little bit uh, too, too, too short. Obviously, I'll pop up a picture, sorry, and you'll see it, but it was, hmm. I've got to go back again. You know what, actually, no, I'm lying, I'm capping. I would still have the haircut to this day, just for the memories, because I came out thinking I was the big boss. I got home and realized, <laughs> this ain't the one, man. This ain't the one. Anyway, continue with the vlog. So I left. Manchester Airport, I said bye to Mumsy, shout out Mumsy. Took a flight from Manchester to Amsterdam, bought myself a little bus down, plain G, you know how it is. G, get that cap, obviously. Anyway, I arrived in Ghana, probably around 7 pm at Kotaka International Airport. Uncle Gilly, shout out to him, he came and scooped me up. I'll show you some little video of some cows we saw on the way there. In the first couple of days I was there, I didn't really do too much. I just took a couple of fit pick shots, as you'll probably see in a second. After the first week, I went on my first medical mission with CMRF, that's Christian Medical Missions Resource Foundation, if I'm wrong. Sorry, mum, it is what it is. They are an NGO who are dedicated to showing the love of God through the word and the positive acts of deed. CMRF was actually founded in 1991 by the founder, group captain, Dr. Samuel Anankara, who was actually my godfather. And he, along with the early team, which my mom was part of, created their own hospital prayer group at 37 Military Hospital Accra, which is where I was born at, years later, obviously. The initial group were about 20 people, mostly uh, medical professional people, and a few non-medics. However, as years went on, this group increased and included people like lawyers, soldiers, artists, teachers, and so forth. Eventually, they felt there was a need to transcend the spiritual satisfaction into the physical, given the total meaning of Christianity. So relief items and funds were sought after to provide assistance in the form of education, health and food. Over the past years, they've been able to leave the shores of Ghana and help other countries such as Togo, Zambia, Ethiopia and Benin. Unfortunately with this though guys, I didn't take many videos unfortunately, I just forgot. I didn't think in three years time I'll be doing this video. However, c'est la vie, copy the MCs, did it and that good stuff. Anyway, I'll try and explain the pictures that I do post in a second with some videos that I do have and then we'll go from there. Our constitution in the Atenese, our own leader and our president of the political party. And what is going on? I might just do what I just did there and show you a video with no explanation, no background, no reference and just leave it there. Sorry. 
imagine this is the third that I've been filming this first video and I've not even finished it. I'm still wearing the same shirt. I know it's bad, but we're gonna keep moving. We're gonna keep striving. Strive for greatness. Shout out LeBron James. Anyway, I've just realized that I don't have many videos for the first mission. So I'm gonna have to fill it in with pictures. A lot of pictures aren't gonna relate to what I'm talking about. However, you're gonna have to bear with me and just experience what I experience with the pictures, if that makes sense. And uh, we'll keep it moving. So we left uh, 37 Military Hospital around 6.30 of the first day of the mission to travel from Accra to Tamale. Tamale is in the northern region of Ghana. I'll obviously put up a couple of pictures so you know what I mean by that. We went in the normal, what you'd expect us to be traveling in, normal big coach or whatever, like the national coach we have here in England. However, probably what, three hours in? Let me just double check. Yeah, about three and a half hours in. We're cooling, we're chilling. I'm probably listening to Arctic Monkeys at this point, by the way. And I hear, <laughs> I said, I said, God, I beg. We cannot be having no breakdown right now. I'm just trying to have a nice, smooth, I know there's only potholes in this place. I don't want any more trouble. Next thing I hear, I hear um, the guys at the front saying that we're gonna have to change transport. Probably wait there for another 40 minutes till the bus came. In my head, I think it's sick. We're gonna have another bus like we did, the National Coach bus. Tell me why Trotra came. For those who don't know who, what Trotra is, I'm gonna put a picture up there. It's basically like a mini bus that we'd have here. It's a mini bus, that's exactly what it is. It is a mini bus. And we're meant to fit ourselves in and all our luggage in. And bear in mind, we barely even touched any place as well. We probably left, what, three hours in? So we had another at least five hours to go in this small, small mini bus with X amount of people in. God have mercy. So we ended up arriving 13 hours later than we expected to. So we kind of missed out the first full day, but obviously you gotta, you gotta keep moving, gotta keep striving for greatness. Day one, I was actually with the dentist. So before I even explain that, I explain how the structure works. So what happens is you go to the center, the pop-up where we're at for the weekend or week. You sign up and then you go to the nurses, the charge nurses, and they'll sign you where you need to be. Then you either see the doctors, dentist, optician. Afterwards, you then go to see the pastors and then they'll speak to you about God and ask you if you want to give your life to God. After that, you then go to the pharmacist if you need medication or not, and then you're free to leave. And that's the beauty of it. That's the service that we provided for the five days. So like I was saying, day one, I was with a dentist. Obviously, I had to go get my dentistry card and all that good stuff. Obviously, cap, once again. I don't like cap so much, but I actually don't cap. Anyway, this is not a game to talk about. <laughs> Obviously, I had to go see what the dentist was saying and like good stuff. I pulled up, I said, what are going They said, oh, what going They didn't say any of that. But, uh, yeah, I was with Dr. Ohene. Ohene means uh, king in tree, for those who wanted to know. And I was with him and another dentist who was there. And she actually flew in with the other team. Two teams, there was a CRMRF team and the Lake Point team. Lake Point's a church in Texas. Shout out to um, James Harden. What? Well, yeah, shout out to James Harden and shout out to Travis as well. You know who you are. The entry is actually really cool. I kind of enjoyed it because, like I told you, like you see in, in the probably thumbnail of this picture, I managed to pull the tooth out with the assistance of Dr. Hine. The video is obviously coming in a second. More outside. More outside. It was a really cool experience, I kind of enjoyed it. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Fortunately for me, I had already loosened the tooth for me, so it wasn't like I was doing everything from scratch, and obviously the patient was more than happy for me to do it, and they understood that I wasn't professional, but they were happy for me to do it anyway. Yes, that was day one. Day two, I was with the pharmacist. Day three, I was with the doctors. Then day four, I went back to the dentist. Fortunately for us guys, I managed to go on two more medical missions, so I won't talk about my experience with the different professionals on this episode. However, I will leave you with this little anecdote from Dr. Jim that I wrote. Today was Dr. Medicine time. I was with Dr. Jim of Texas. I spoke to him about why he chose that profession and he felt that like he was led into it as he always liked science when he was younger and his mother thought it would be good for him to study. After first semester of pre-med, he changed to study history as all of his friends always had time for fun and he didn't. Later on, he had to go and fight in the Vietnam War, and after that, he started medicine. He told me that he would study from 7 to midnight every day, Monday to Friday, and have Friday night off, and not do as much in the weekends. 
he said he was working around 70 hours a week during his residency. But in spite of that, feels that his job is rewarding because he's able to help people. As I shouted for the day, I could see why he said that. As he consulted, he was able to help a lot of patients and at times seek advice from other doctors. So that has been all for the first Ghana vlog or reflection, whatever you want to call it. Hopefully next week I'll be able to get a better t-shirt to wear. And I'll see you guys there. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Leave a comment down below. Click on the notification bell and whatever else they're meant to say. Or you're meant to say, I don't know. And see ya.